human beings have sincerity alarms. So they know if you're being sincere or insincere. They're, they know if they're, you're just trying to sell them something and they know if you're actually being authentic about who you are. You know, if you want to go far in this work, you have to be authentically who you are. And the only way that you could do that confidently is if you're on a constant work on yourself. This is Adulting with Joy Spring exclusively on Spotify. What's up, you guys, and welcome to another episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. Today is very exciting because we have on the show somebody that I look up to, somebody that I find so interesting, entertaining, and funny. I have been seeing her videos everywhere online. Una, yung mga cross-posted videos on Facebook and then her face was just there everywhere and for a good reason at that too. Welcome to the show, Nana Silairo. Hey girl! Hi everybody! I'm sorry I don't have my cam. Internet problems. <laughs> Your content is inspiring and super duper funny. Um, Nana, can you, well, I guess, share with us a little bit how this content creation journey of yours started. So uh, my journey as a content creator started like a really long time ago. I, ever since, ever since pa, when bata pa ako, my parents already told me that I was already making the funny faces. I was already doing the funny voices and the dancing. So I think it all started there. And then um, my brother-in-law, um, he met me when I was siguro eight or seven. And he would always take videos of me when I was younger. And then recently lang nga namin nakita yung mga videos when I was in Dubai. Na, oh my gosh, I was dancing. I was singing. Parang ano, parang bata na pabibo. Do you know, do you get what I mean? Like, batang yeah. pabibo. And then, um, fast forward to 2017. Um, it was like a very dark phase for me in college like I was so lost um I was already in fourth year college I didn't know what to do I had no picture because everybody was applying for jobs and I was applying for nothing Mm -hmm. so I said what what should I do with my life I started vlogging for Iloilo I started promoting restaurants in Iloilo and then after that, the pandemic happened. So it was like, it went downhill from there because the vlogging for Iloilo was so good. We were um, like one of the m- most successful vloggers in Iloilo. Kasi Iloilo is a small. Siguro there's like over 200 vloggers lang. And that's that may sound a lot, but it's nothing compared to Manila. You know? So, and, and Cebu. So Iloilo is like the last one to discover vlogging talaga for a living. So buti na lang, we were like one of the first na nag-vlog here in Iloilo. So after that, the pandemic happened. We were both, like, my best friend and I, we were both super sad. Like, what are we gonna do now? Because our job was to promote restaurants. And when the pandemic happened, close lahat. Mm-hmm. So I'm like one of those people who said that TikTok, I'd never do TikTok. What's that? No, I'm a doy. Okay, I ate my words and then I became a TikToker. <laughs> I just uploaded one content kasi, one video about Microsoft. And then after that, nag 5 million views. And dun ko na discover na, oh my gosh, it's that quick to go viral on TikTok. So, um, yun, it started there 2017. And after that, I did not stop until now. <laughs> And here you are with 3.9 million followers on TikTok. I know. And with you, yeah. one of the successful podcasters. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a nobody. Um, but I, I mean, it's it's crazy, you know. Like, I, well, to backtrack a little bit, I love Iloilo. One of my best girlfriends is actually from Iloilo. So um, I would visit Iloilo one of the first few times that I went there was to go to 2015. I was hosting something for UP Visayas at TEDx there. And I just 
fell in love with the place. I fell in love with the people. The food is amazing. And then I made such great connections with people there that I would constantly go back. Um, and I feel like you guys are, there are so many talented people from Iloilo and you're adding to that list. Like Gabby Padilla is also a good friend of mine and she's, she's an actor. She's also from there. And you're right. There was, there are a lot of talented people from Iloilo and now, Lumalabas na siya to Metro Manila because of like the platform and everything. Is this something that, you know, you mentioned that you started creating videos a long, long time ago, but did you ever imagine for it to be this big? No. No, I, I only thought that if you watched my old videos, I would always speak in Hiligaynon or in Ilongo. Yeah, I was watching your YouTube videos. Because I always thought na hanggang dito lang ako. <laughs> I didn't know na recently ko lang kasi na-realize na I have to dream big. These are the lessons na I learned along the way. And I have to dream big talaga. I have to dream internationally. Na doon hmm. talaga yung aabutin ko. But before, I just spoke in Hiligaynon because I thought only Ilongos would watch my content. You know, and then don't gonna realize on TikTok when when people started commenting, na, can you please put subtitles or can you please speak in Tagalog? We wanna relate to you. We wanna understand what you're saying. You're funny. Your face is funny, but we don't understand. So don't. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm going somewhere. I'm going viral. That's what they say. <laughs> Yeah, you're going viral. No, I, I actually was watching like your YouTube videos, your 30 facts about you. And I was like, my goodness, the, you, I'm not just saying it to try and make rapport, but like the way that you express yourself, even if I don't understand the language in which you're expressing yourself, is so engrossing. Like I'm just engrossed at watching you. See, good because you're so animated, so bubbly, and you're so good at being able to express yourself. And it made me wonder, was that something that you always had a knack for? You know, being confident and expressing yourself with like a certain level of being unapologetic and and just <laughs> being so comfortable in who you are because I feel like that that translates so much on screen because so many people like you is that something that you've always had or something that you have you had to work up to I think it's something that I always had um mm. the big big factor siguro yung the people that I live with you know my <laughs> mom she's very vocal and my dad my dad um, used to travel around the world and sell. He's a salesman for something, but I forgot. He worked in Boracay. He's like a very outspoken person. Um, he is always into sales. And my mom would be into, my mom owns a restaurant. So, of course, she has to deal with people. So, it would be something that I would unconsciously, you know, observe sa kanila. And my siblings would always be, like that to vocal and would always work with, with people and then my lola my lola siguro has um the biggest impact talaga in my life my lola is a teacher she's like a legend here in Iloilo so if you say her name and the, if if i say my full name people will be like you're the apo of this you're the apo of Vilma Paredes and i'm like yeah i am the apo oh no wonder why you talk like this so they would eventually um know why I'm like this. And when they meet my mom, they would say na, ah, now we know kung saan ka nagmana. <laughs> they would always say that. So siguro yon yung family. Mm -hmm. And people think na I'm pretending to be really funny. You know, I always get that a lot. I always get uh, people ask me in person, are you really funny? Are you really like this? <laughs> That's or kind of a rude question to ask, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I swear, people are always asking me, are you really like this? Or is this like for show? Because whether we like it or not, meron talaga eh. Na for show lang talaga yung personality. So I I always tell them that, well, you, you be the judge when you meet me in real life. Then you will see if ganun talaga ako. And, and I feel like what I do on social media doesn't feel like work unless it's for a brand. Eh? But when I talk to social, to the people like the 30 facts, I was like literally just being myself, like no acting there. When I make TikToks about story times, it's all me. 
nothing when you when you said earlier that I'm animated I'm really animated in real life that's why my hands and my nails are all I always always look cute because I use them when I talk it's part of it <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah it's part of who you are <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, actually, funny enough, when we posted the poster of you coming to the show, a lot of my friends from Iloilo messaged me. And they're like, yeah, we know Nana. Um, I, I see her in my friend circles. And then some of them said that they were your friends. And they were like, Dati pa bubbly yan. Asi sobrang bubbly niya talaga in person. Sabi niya, sobrang happy kami na nakikita na na ibang tao. Kasi ganun daw talaga yung personality mo. And that's like, that's rare to find people like that. Because most of the time, people on broadcasting and social media put it up a notch to try and gain a following and i think more than anything people see through that but like it you you can gain a following from it but eventually it doesn't go far enough and not people are just duped by it through all through and through eventually people will kind of be like yeah that's really not how she is as a person and they do they they know People are very smart. They can sense if you're acting or or they can sense if you're being authentic. Yeah. I, my dad would always say, um, human beings have sincerity alarms. So they know if you're being sincere or insincere. They're, they know if they're, you're just trying to sell them something, like an a, idea or a vision of who you are. Um, and they know if you're actually being authentic about who you are, which is the reason why he would tell me that, you know, if you want to go far in this work, you have to be authentically who you are. And the only way that you could do that confidently is if you're on a constant work on yourself. Meaning you can't be authentic and sincere about who you are if medyo crappy na sa loob ng heart mo, diba? So you have to constantly work on that and be a better person. Um, but I I think it's a huge difference though, right? It's a huge difference being this animated, happy, bubbly person within your close circles and within the people that you meet. And then to do that catapulted in an audience of 3.9 million plus, plus, plus. How has life been like since that happened? What are the biggest changes that you've gone through and how have you been dealing with all that? Uh, siguro na realize ko na I made it like really big. Not sure if you know, but I went to Siki, Siki Horror last month or last last three weeks ago i came from siki Hor. that explains na medyo tan <laughs> super tan but i went to the beach and then dun ko na realize na oh my gosh kasi well can i call you joyce or ate joyce yes <laughs> joyce <laughs> joyce is fine please don't call me ate with you uh, i have to be honest with you well, here in iloilo i'm not super duper duper like i feel like i'm not super duper famous Maybe because not a lot of people ask for pictures here. Kasi nga, siguro may mentality yung mga taga Iloilo na, ah, she's just from Iloilo. Why would we ask pictures, you know? So it's, I think it's like that. But when I went to Sikihor with Bebu, it was crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. And um, from the boat to the port to the bus to the checkpoint, everybody knew who we were. Everybody, Wild. every restaurant. So it was something new for me, especially for Bebu. <laughs> he he's like an introvert. We have like total opposites na personality. So it was really new for him when people run and ask for pictures and actually scream or get teary eyed when they see us. So um, I think that's something that I'm still getting used to. And sometimes uh, before nga, before I had. I lined up no vaccine time when the vaccine time happened na we were all required to take the vaccine. It was really early at 6 in the morning. And of course, sino po yung super energetic at 6 a.m. in the morning? And then somebody messaged me after the vaccination. Somebody messaged me, Hi, Nana, saw you earlier. You're not as jolly as you seem on TikTok pala. She just, he said that. Like, you're not as jolly as you seem. And then I had to respond. I said, I'm sorry. If I didn't, like, I, if I wasn't super crazy at 6 in the morning, kakagising ko lang po. What do you expect from me? Like, sabi niya, sabi niya, I wasn't smiling. I was wearing shades. Like, 
sometimes kasi people's expectations talaga, they think na we're robots, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, they forget na we're humans too. And they just always want us to be happy. But, um, siguro yan lang. Um, sometimes I really have to present myself. Like, I really have to dress up nice because we don't know kasi who, who we meet. But sometimes talaga, there are days na wala na talaga akong pakialam. Bala na sila kung ano makita nila. <laughs> But but especially when I, kasi I fly back and forth to Manila. When I go out, I make sure I always look presentable and cute because you never know. You know, you never know who's gonna scream, na na, picture. It, um, it still warms my heart. I like it. I like it when people approach me nicely. Oh, oh, last one. Um, One thing that I'm not used to, when people approach me aggressively, when I'm eating, you know, those those times when I'm eating, when I'm traveling and I'm sweating so much and people just approach and, you know, aggressively, na picture, take a picture with me. Something, so it happens, it happens. And yeah. the I'm, I'm, I'm a nice person. I say, okay, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, bute, bute. Kailangan mo lang i-reserve yung energy mo kasi it's just gonna go bigger from here, I'm guessing. Like, no. And they're saying that this is just at the beginning. Oh. Yeah, and I think it's also like a factor that you started kasi in the pandemic, right? Like so many, ang daming mga TikTok stars talaga that are shocked by the response of people. Because you just see the like, millions of views or thousands of comments but it's all on your phone and we haven't been in big events or you know seeing other people so parang hindi mo pa na experience yung intensity of you know so parang i feel like it's such a saturated experience once you finally get to do it because you've been so closed off the entire time that you were building your audience and maybe that's why also a lot of people are yeah siguro nga kasi other people they're always asking for a fan meet a fan meet where the people where I just where I just sit and then meet a lot of people and then I'll answer their questions and that's something that I'm still not ready to do because I'm scared that maybe nobody will show up you know these things na <laughs> I'm scared maybe that's kind of impossible <laughs> ask me they will ask me mean questions and I don't know how to answer or sometimes I'm I'm an impulsive answerer sometimes I say things I'm not supposed to say so it, it Makes sense na what you said like a while ago na I started in the pandemic. That's why I'm still not used to these things. Mm-mm. And it's a shocking experience. Like in general, just having... I, I, would, I would have this conversation with my friends where I was saying, you know, the way that people create social connections these days is weird. It used to be that you meet people through school or through friends or through family, right? And then you you create social connections. But these days, most of the time, the, so the way that we create social connections is you see this person online and then you have this feeling of, I know this person. She's told me about her stories. I've seen her say that, you know, hindi ako maganda lang dahil sa makeup. I am gorgeous. Like, they know already who you are. They feel like because they've seen you every single day and you've, you know, replied to their comment or something. And there's this weird understanding or at least feeling that we're connected. But in reality, you're not. But then some people approach you as if they already had that connection. But it's one way. It's not the usual way that people do it, diba? It's like only 10% of who I am, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm yeah, scared yeah. to join reality shows or showbiz because that's it's it's they're going to unlock a lot of things that I'm not ready for. Parang daming secrets a Pandora box of everything. Um, but you mentioned earlier. I think some of the best or funniest videos that you created were the ones with the bamboo, obviously, because you just see this uh, guy who loves you absolutely so much because he is just sitting there joining the video with you, being patient with you, having such an incredibly different personality from you, but at the same time supporting you in what you're doing. Um, Tell us more about that. How has it been like being with your person and going through this whole journey together? Okay. It wasn't easy in the beginning because like what I said, he came, he comes from a very conservative family. 
So it wasn't just Bebu who adjusted. It was the whole clan. And he comes from a big family. So I had to adjust too because it's not a one-way street. Eh. Hindi pwede nga si, Beb, na si Bebu lang yung mag-adjust and his family. So I had to adjust too. Um, I'm very loud. Like, I'm very loud. Ah, very loud. <laughs> so I had to do something about that. I'm very... Um, everything that comes to mind, I just say it right away without really thinking twice. So, yun. But Bebu adjusted fast, you know, because he already knew who I was when we were younger. We met when we were... Uh, we already knew... Iloilo is a small place. It's not like Manila na parang far from everyone. No, Iloilo is a small place. We already knew each other way back when we were in grade school. We already had a background. He already knew that I was a performer. I was joining this regionals and singing and oration and declamation. I was like everywhere. So he knew. He knew what he was getting like into. He, he <laughs> knew that I was going to be the loud one. I already gave him a heads up before, before, like, before, hindi pa nga courting stage, I already told him, I want kids in the future. I want to get married. And I'm loud. And I'm hubadera. And I know that you're <laughs> conservative, but I don't care. So I already gave him that. And I told him, if you want to stay, then okay. If you don't, fine. I already <laughs> gave him all these lists. And so he stayed until now he's here. So buti na lang, he's used to it. And sometimes lang, um, he's not used to the super duper busy schedules. And sometimes, parang, me naman, you know, I hope you get it. You have a husband. So parang when you get super busy, <laughs> me naman, pwede ako naman. Because sometimes work, work, work. But he understands, which I'm very, very thankful and grateful for. Because he understands my work eh. He's not the celosa types who get celos work. There, I know so many people who would say na, ako or career. You know, he would always let me choose my career. <laughs> yeah, like, and support he's a you good in that. Guy. He's a good guy. I can't say anything bad about him. Mm. I don't want to mm. jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're going to. I don't think you're going to. It's hard to find people like that. It's hard to find people who are actually there to encourage you and support you and be there as like I, I would say the same thing about my husband my husband is a very needy person he's the type of person that would you know ask ask for quality time even now that we have a baby he'd be like can we go on a date that's just the two of us and we're not gonna talk about Liam our baby although we love our baby so much he just wants that alone solo time but at the same time there's always this sense that I feel supported in every way you know where you feel like yeah, even if I'm busy, even if things are going crazy, I always have someone to come home to that believes in me, supports me, encourages me. We'll have to butt head sometimes, but then at the end of the day, it's really communicating all those differences that we have. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. Um, I now want to go to some of the questions that our listeners sent in, and there are a lot of them, but we'll probably go through like maybe three or four questions here, and I want to hear what you have in mind. Let's see. This first question is coming from Magnifique Juno. That's a cool name. So I want to ask, how do you guys stay motivated and creative even if you feel dull? Do you have moments where you feel dull, but then at the same time, you have to create content and put up all of these things? Um. Yeah, I do. And I feel like I'm going through that phase. Like the Well, it's not really dull phase. It's just that my head is everywhere. I just have mm. so many things in mind because number one, I am a teacher. I am a full-time content creator. I travel back and forth to Manila. And right now, I'm constructing my room. And I have to balance the Bebu life and the personal <laughs> life. Yeah, I always put that in mind. I always have Bebu in my mind and I'm not bothered by it. Hindi siya... I, I hope I'm not, you know, putting this in the wrong way. Pero hindi siya pabigat. When Bebu is not a pabigat. I genuinely want to put Bebu in my list. So, um, how do I stay motivated? I have goals. I have very big goals. And I'm not sure kung sinong artista ang nagsabi nito 
But if, sabi niya, if your goals don't scare you, then they're not big enough. Somebody said that. I forgot who. Maybe it's a quote from a book or something. But it really hit me so hard na, oh my gosh, that's true. I have. I have to dream big. I have to, even though I know I can't afford a land, a land cruiser, I should dream that big. You know, I have like a dream board. I have my dream car. I have my dream pegs or room. I have my dream lampshade. I have my dream <laughs> earphones. Even though the smallest things, they motivate me for some reason. I have my, you know what? I have my dream bed sheet and my dream um, foam. Because <laughs> the foam is uh, different talaga. So these are the things that keep me motivated. And the for the creative part naman, how I stay creative, <sighs> Sometimes it helps talaga if you have a support system who gives you suggestions. It's very important. I always ask Bebu for help. I always ask my managers for help. And sometimes I cry. I'm so punong puno na. My creative juice. Ubush na, ubush na. I always do that. And they would always say, stop everything that you're doing and rest. And then after I rest, mm-hmm. yun na. There. Creative na everything, creative na. And sometimes I get really creative if I know na malapit na yung deadline. Mm. Which is not mm. good, actually. <laughs> yung cramming. Cramming is not healthy, but it's it works for me. And eh. sometimes I get really creative if I know na the deadline is later or tomorrow. So, doon lumalabas. And how do I stay motivated pa? But basta yun, I just have a dream board and... I, my dreams and my goals are visible. It's not just here, mm. but I can see it. I manifest mm. it. Yeah, that's so good. I, I remember I was reading this research before that talked about how if you put into writing your words or if you put into writing the thing that you're reading or if you want to remember something and you put it into writing, you're more likely to remember it. Your brain is more likely to retain that information because having like a physical copy of whatever it is you're thinking about, you're dream- dreaming about changes everything because now you're putting it into the physical world and knowing that okay it's there it must be done something like that so that's a really good um that's a really good it's my advice. wallpaper is it really it is it is also bebu his laptop all his goals nasa wallpaper niya yeah, the vision board. The vision board is so important. I remember reading about that a couple of years ago. And when I was younger, but when I was in my early 20s, late teens, ganun yung ginawa ko. And true enough, all of those things pretty much happened. Happen. I'm, yeah, I'm, well, you know, I'm from a Christian background. I don't really believe in manifesting, but there's science behind it. There's science yeah. behind putting your vision onto like the physical page. So that's why I also write and do all of those things. So that's really good advice. And I liked what you said about putting Bebu into the schedule. I think that's a sign of a healthy relationship because unless you're willing to make, I wouldn't say, not the one sacrifice. Well, yes, yeah, sacrifices to a certain extent, but unless you're willing to prioritize your relationship, it's never going to work. Like you have to carve out time for the person that you love to try and make quality time together. So... Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, another question here um, from Carla Mariano. This is an interesting question. She asks, Nana, what's a surprising fact or thing that you learned now that you're famous? Okay, surprising fact about myself or about the social media world? Anything. Um, Surprising fact. Okay. Well, it's not actually surprising, but it's a fact. Now, I'm really good with people. I realize oh. that. Now, in every product, I'm really... Hindi siya, I don't want... It may, it may sound parang I'm boasting eh. But I'm really good with people. And I realize that in every production na I meet, I always make it a point that I know each one. I may not remember mm-hmm. their names, but I know the roles and I know the names. And I treat everyone the same like if i meet the ceo of this company i have to treat the ceo and the one holding the mic the same way parang ganon it's always like that because i have to be friends with everyone because the production team are the ones who's going to help you back it's like a same way like parang 
two-way street na I have to be kind to them if I want them to be kind to me. So doon ko din na-realize, siguro that's one of the reasons why I became a teacher as well. Because people are saying that I'm really good with parents and how I talk to the parents, especially when it's sensitive stuff about their kids. I can tell them like very slowly what's happening or what happened in class or what the child did na hindi sila ma-offend. And also, what are other surprising facts ba? Na... I, I, I don't know if I can say it. <laughs> no, Just no. say it. Okay, now other people... <laughs> Other other people don't, other stars don't seem like who they are in real life. Parang ganon, mm. siguro. Which mm. is normal, I think. <laughs> so that's why I'm yeah. saying it's not super surprising. It's just that people, not a lot of people know this. Na totally different talaga yung life ng mga social media influencers or artistas from the life that they are projecting online. It's like only 5 or 3% of who they really are. So, yun lang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a chink. It's a chink of like the armor, right? It's a su- super small part of who the person is. And, and I feel like it's magnified kasi on so many ways and levels, diba? Tapos parang you expect them to be like that in person. But in reality, it's it's just not how people are. So, I super get that. Y- you mentioned about being a teacher. Are you still teaching now? Like, with everything that you're doing, are you still able to teach? I am. I am. And I think hmm. a lot. I get a lot of questions na parang how do I, I juggle teaching and being a full-time content creator? Okay, so I have to be very honest because I do value my... My, the trust of my viewers and whoever is listening to this, I'm not saying that being a content creator and being a teacher also is impossible. It is. It is. Um, but sometimes, if you have 3.9 million people depending on you, it does get a little bit hard, you know? Um, during my first few years of teaching, I can still manage my time. I can still be a full-time teacher 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. and be a content creator 4 p.m. till 12 midnight. I can still do that. But now, na parang, parang a lot of, uh, I'm getting the recognition that I deserve. I'm claiming it. <laughs> now that I'm getting all of these brands, na overwhelming, overwhelming digital ad invites and series invites, it does get a little bit draining to do two things, two of your passions at the same time. But then I realized that even though I stop teaching in the future, I will never stop teaching. Does that make Mm. sense? Yeah. I, I may stop being a teacher in school, but I will never, ever, ever stop educating because I really think that's my passion and my purpose in this world, to share kindness to share equality, to share confidence, and many more in the future. Contestant number one, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Ama- amazing because great big changes in your life, right? Happening. And it's still very overwhelming. I'm still getting used to it. Yeah, uh, well, uh, only big things from here on out, which I guess is, uh, this is the perfect question to close our episode. Um, now, Nana, that you've, you've been going through all of these big changes, you're achieving your dreams one big dream at a time. You know, you're able to do something that you absolutely love for people who look up to you. Um, here's a question. What's one advice that you've received that you've, you keep coming back to that helps you now in your life? What's that one advice? Is I learn so many things every day. Like every day, I always make it a point that I'm learning something or I learned something good. But two things that changed my life and that keeps on repeating talaga sa mind ko. Number one is people are temporary and I know it sounds sad, but the people you meet, or sometimes they won't last forever. Kasi ganun ako before eh. Sabi ko, my best friends na di, na my best friends at this stage of my life will be my best friends for the rest of my life. And it's not always like that. 
sometimes when their chapter is done sa life mo, it's done. You know? And it was something that I really had to adjust to. Na I really couldn't get over for such a long time. Na parang, I kept on blaming myself. Na is it, is it me? Is it you or is it me? <laughs> or it has to be me. Why do I keep on losing people in my life? You know, I had like a really dark phase in my life where I kept on losing people and I didn't understand why. And I couldn't accept it if it was me or it was them. Per siguro it was me. Siguro it was me. And I'm not ashamed of that. And then couldn't realize that people come and go when their chapter is done, it's done. And we move on. We move on to the next chapter naman of our lives. And may reason talaga si, si siya. <laughs> may reason siya why tinapos niya yung friendship niyo or ang relationship niyo. And it may hurt. It may hurt a lot. But there is, you know, there's something better coming. That's number one. That's number one. Number two is what the people around me, especially my managers and my parents and my family, they would always, always tell me to give back. That's it. Give back. Kahit anong way pa yan, kahit sa, sa restaurant, kahit mag-tip ka lang, that's, also, uh, that's already a way of giving back. Kahit mag-fan meet ka lang to people who are dying to meet you, that's already a way of giving back. Um... Yesterday, nga, we were buying construction supplies and there was this really kind man who helped us find where the aisle is and it really touched my heart and I gave him a little tip and he was like, huh? Well, what did I do? Why? Why are you giving this to me? And I said, keep it, kuya. Kasi hindi ako makakatulog mamayang gabi if you don't accept this. Parang ganon. <laughs> like, it really feels good to make other people feel good. Kahit yung mga delivery people, yung mga delivery men like when i was in manila it was life changing talaga when i met this driver and i really gave him the tip that he deserved and he thanked me and i cried the way he thanked me it was like sabi ko sabi ko kay god when i was praying sabi ko it god it's so amazing how i can change people i can make someone's day and they unconsciously make my day Okay. Does it make sense? I hope yeah. it makes sense. Nah, I'm not even trying to make their day. Eh. I just gave them something, and the way they said they said thank you to me. Wala na, finish na. I can sleep na. Happy na ako. Roll day, finish. Ganun <laughs> lang. Man, babaw po yung kaligayahan ko. So yun po yung two things. Number one is people come and go, and that's something that we have to accept. Number two, mm. stay grounded. No matter kung saan man naabot kung sa buhay. You have to stay grounded. I love that. Words of wisdom from Nana. We should start, you should start a new series on your TikTok with your words of wisdom. I love yeah. it. <laughs> um, but thank you again for sharing your time with me. I know you're very, very busy with so many things. I still can't believe this is the first time that you're on a podcast and it's an honor to have you here on the show. Um, I hope this is a start. Yeah, yeah, I hope so too. I hope it's something that you will. I hope we can have you on the show again soon. Um, hopefully in person, if you're ever in Manila and you have time, then maybe we can jump on the show together. But if not, I mean, if you create your own podcast, we'd love to hear more of that. And of course, I'm still going to be looking out on all of your stuff online. Thank you, Nana, for joining us here on the podcast. Thank you, Joyce. I'm very happy. I was very nervous in the um, like in the beginning because I had no idea what was going to happen. But it's like talking to a friend, talking Yay. to like someone who's really interested in what I'm doing in life. So it's good. Awesome. Hopefully, Thank in the you, future, ikaw yeah. naman yung interview ko. Let's do it. Game ako dyan. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. We hope that you liked it. If you did, please do let us know with the hashtag Adulting with Joy Spring. We'll see you guys next time. Paalam. Paalam. Bye. Bye. Thank you. If you like this podcast and want to support our team, visit anchor.fm slash joyspring to make a monthly donation. Not only will you keep adulting with Joyspring going, when you donate, you help in feeding my dog Bowie and making this world a better place. Visit anchor.fm slash joyspring and click support to give me and this podcast your hard-earned money. Why you would do it, I have no idea, but thanks in advance. 
that's it for this episode of Adulting with Joy Spring. If you liked this podcast, please don't forget to use the hashtag Adulting with Joy Spring and also check out www.joyspring.com for the show notes and tag me on social media with you know it at Joy Spring. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Paalam!